So I recently made a video about an interesting bug that came up when my students and I were making custom allocators in one of my classes. I'll put a link down in the description if you missed that video, but to give you the gist, basically we had a bug that only showed up when we redirected output from a program and yeah, it's a little weird, but Saurabh asked an interesting follow-up question. Specifically, he asked, how does the program know that its standard out will be redirected by the OS? That seems a bit strange. I thought redirection was done by the OS or the terminal. And I have to be honest, when I first got this question, I didn't know. I hadn't dug that deep. I had basically, once I figured out what was going on as far as the buffering mode and the allocation changes that were causing the bug, basically I just moved on. But Saurabh, your question piqued my interest and I just, I was curious. So I decided to dig a little deeper and try to get an answer to that question. And I thought it might be an interesting process for you all to see in case you come across anything that you don't understand yourselves. Now, as I said in the original video, this bug is definitely dependent on the machine you're working on. You could and probably do have different implementations of printf on different versions of libc. So today I'm gonna dig into GNU libc and play around in Linux a bit, but you may find differences maybe even important differences in different systems. And of course, one of the reasons that I'm going to play around in Linux is that I'm confident that everything is going to be open source so I can actually take a look at the code. But so first of all, where should we look? So first of all, I just wanna take a look. I wanna go back to this problem and look at it in our debugger. So yeah, like we did before, I'm just going to run it in the debugger. I'm going to break in main and run it to there. Then we will break in malloc and we'll continue. This gets us to this malloc call. And this memory, this malloc call is being called in response to a call to printf. And so that's why I wanted to stop here. Now, if we look at the backtrace, because it doesn't, it's not like printf is directly calling malloc. Printf is calling a bunch of different functions. You can see, you know, printf is calling vprintf, which is calling a bunch of these other functions, which eventually get to malloc. So looking at the source code for printf is probably not going to be helpful to me. But if I look at this GIIO file allocate or do allocate function, Function, that seems relevant. That one's probably going to be helpful. And that I'm looking for on line 101 in file do alloc.c. Okay, so let's search for that. So if we do IO file do allocate source code. Oh yeah, and one thing while I'm searching, one thing to mention is that the source code for glibc is available online. So you may not have realized that. It can be really beneficial when you're trying to look around and see how things are done under the hood. It's just code. It's not that different from the code that you write yourself. Only, I mean, I hope it has fewer bugs than your code does. Just joking, hopefully your code is great. But here's the code. This is basically what we're looking at here. And if we come down here, we can see IO file do allocate. So here's, this is the function we're looking for. If we come down and look at line 101, this is the malloc call that we are interested in. This is the one that we're seeing. So, okay, great. Let's have a look around. The size variable that's being passed into malloc, that seems to be the issue is sometimes when we're not redirecting output, it's one number. 1024. And when we are redirecting output, it's something bigger, 8K. So if we look at this code, we look at the variable, first of all, size, it's declared up here as a local variable. And right here, it is set to buff size. So let's take a quick look really quick. I'm just going to duplicate this. Let's see where buff size is defined. It's going to be here in standard io.h. And if we look down here, you can see that buff size is 8192 or 8K. So that's what that's defined to be. If we come back here, you can see that this is the default size. So basically when you get in here, when you're allocating a buffer for a file, we're gonna start with that 8K size. That's gonna be our default. I guess somebody picked that as a nice size. Um, maybe it's typically an efficient size to use for buffering. That's fine. But then after that, we're going to come down here and we're going to call stat. Now it's running through some aliases, but it's it's going to call stat on the file. And we've seen stat in previous videos, but this allows us to get information about files and file-like objects. And it's going to put that information in this st struct if it's successful. And if it is, then we are in this if statement and we're going to check to see if it's a TTY and that changes things if it is. That's not really relevant to our current conversation, but it, it is interesting. Maybe that's something we'll talk about TTYs in a future video. But then, and this is very relevant to our bug, then we check to see down here if our block size is greater than zero and if our block size is less than buff size. So if stat told us that the block size for this particular file, file-like object is less than 8K, then we're gonna use that instead. So this makes sense, I guess, but first of all, let's talk about what is the block size. So for this, I wanna jump back into our terminal. So we come back here, let's get out of here and let's just look at a file. So any file in here, let's see that out.txt. If I say stat 
out.txt, then you're gonna notice this IO block entry here, okay? That's the block size, which seems a bit big for a 12 byte file, but what this is saying is that the most efficient block size is one megabyte. And it turns out that this is the case on my current machine for any regular file. So this is maybe machine specific, but on this machine, pretty much the block size we're gonna use for any regular file is going to be one megabyte. Now let's see how this block changes if I'm writing to standard out instead. So for this, I'm gonna come in here and modify my program really quick because we're gonna call stat from in here. And so let's uh, sysstat.h. And then down here, let's create a new struct, one of these stat structs. We'll call it stbuff. And then down here, I'm gonna call fstat. And fstat works with file descriptors, not file pointers. So I'm going to get the file no function to grab me the file descriptor for standard out. And then we'll hand in the address of stbuff. So that's what's gonna get filled with our information. Then down here, before we print hello world, I'm just going to add a fprintf call. And this is gonna to print to standard error. That way the redirection won't redirect this because I don't, I want this to just show up on the terminal anyway. And we'll say block size equals LD, a new line. And then here, what we're just gonna do is put stbuff.st block size. Okay, so this is basically gonna print out our block size. That's all I'm using this for is I just wanted to grab within the program what the block size of standard out is going to be. And now you can see if I come down here, let's recompile. But now if I run example, you can see I get a block size of 1024. If I do redirect the output, well, I get a seg file, but first I get a block size of one megabyte, okay? And that's because now we're writing to a file and that file has a block size that's one meg, just like we saw earlier. And of course, if we think back to our code, since 1024 is smaller than 8K, then libc is going to use the smaller size as its buffer size because the operating system told it that 1K is going to be more efficient. So Sarah, to answer your question, the program isn't really detecting redirection. I mean, it is indirectly, but it's really just asking the OS what's the most efficient block size for the file or file like object that it's writing to. And it turns out that sometimes it's 1K in the case of writing to standard out just to the terminal. And in other cases, when it's writing to a file, it ends up with 8K. And if we decided to change buff size for our machine, we might even get numbers bigger than 8K. In fact, we definitely would for this file because it wants one meg. So I hope that's interesting and helps all of you out there see how things work under the hood. But more importantly, I hope that helps you see that when you run into something that you don't understand, you're trying to figure out, you can always pop the hood, take a look at the libc source code, do a little digging and see what you can find out. It's often a very educational experience. And of course, if your version of libc is not open source, well, that makes life harder. Sorry, yay Linux. But anyway, drop this video a like if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. And until then, I will see you later. Happy coding.